corporate clients across IT, ITES, BFSI, pharma, and consumer goods sectors. It has onboarded 8,000 plus members from 69 countries, 90 plus leadership experts. They coach from 10 countries, coaching these members to actively manage their career and help in charting their growth path. It has launched TS, uh, the TSIM premium services with two corporate clients for coaching 100 plus employees. It has recently sold its first enterprise sandbox model to a blue chip corporate for their employees. The company's revenue has been contributed from enterprise as well as a B2C business. Slate is creating India's most comprehensive SME data repository by offering them a real-time invoicing payments and reporting platform that seamlessly integrates with the other accounting packages. Slate presently has 10,000 users, including 1,000 CS and tax advisors that bundle Slate's <coughs> platform as a co-branded services to their uh, own customers in order to automate reporting, inventory, management, invoicing, and collections, and other financial management functions and tools. Slate has partnered with over 500 resellers and the software distributor to reach out to the end users, thereby ensuring that Slate's client acquisition cost is the lowest in the industry. And coming to our subsidiary, Slate Analytical Private Limited, a wholly owned subsidiary of the company, has raised 52.4 million by way of preferential allotment of pre-series A cumulative compulsorily convertible preferentials to new investors. Sweeney, I think uh, if you said Slate, it should be Signal, right? Signal, sorry, Signal, yeah. Uh, thereby, Zelmok shareholding in Signal has changed to 91.95% on a fully diluted basis and it has now become a majority-owned subsidiary of Zelfmark. During the, during the quarter, the company has incorporated its wholly-owned subsidiary, Zelfmark Design and Tech Limited UK, for facilitating its international expansion plans. Madhu is leading this international operations. He has extensive experience in working with the communities of finance, technology, and in uh, private equity firms. We expect that our presence in UK will enable Zelp to deliver services to international startup, focusing on mass market, soft sciences, man machine interfaces, and all promising areas over the long term. We have also started our office in Hyderabad, which will provide further impetus to the company's operations going forward. Now, let me come to the outlook for the remaining fiscal of 2020. We see a promising growth in our portfolio companies. Given that they are concentrating on the two unaddressed area of the economy, we expect our investments, including in Fortigo, Mihu, Woovly, Signal, to expand their access and reach and enter the new generation of growth. <clears throat> we continue to maintain our cautiously optimistic outlook given the underlying economic volatility. With this, now I request Ravi to open the floor for a question and answers. Thank you, sir. Uh, I may now uh, request participants uh, to raise their hand for the for the Q and A. Uh, in case uh, any, uh, uh, please note that uh, you know we be given uh, first preference will be given to those who raise raise their hands on a first come first serve basis, and uh, people who who ask on the chat box uh, they will be taken up last. We'll wait for a, a moment uh, while the uh, question queue assembles. Yes, we have a question from the line of uh, uh, Mr. Rudresh Kalyani. Mr. Rudresh, uh, please go ahead. Uh, hi, Sandeepan. I have got a couple of questions. See, uh, as we get... Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I was... Uh, as we are getting nearer to the uh, cessation of revenue from the service domain, uh, how much are we ex expecting from it one year down the line? And what will be the margins with respect to it? Um, Srinika should answer that question better because numbers and all are not something we can diverge that way. But uh, uh, fr Frankly speaking, uh, right now, we are not in a position to comment anything on the future numbers. But yes, as far as the services, as the business is concerned, as we have commented in our previous uh, analyst call, we are looking to 
see some traction Q1 of next financial year. Okay. Uh, and uh, second question is about the uh, customer churn rate as well as the uh, reputation rate. See, the services part that we will take, we are not looking at high churn there. But in the past, what we have done were one of projects and all, and they were more of solutions than anything else. So the nature of business would be slightly different from the new customers that we are trying to acquire and building the pipeline from there. And these, some of them would at least be long-term contracts. Till now, what we have done has mostly been uh, innovation projects, which has had its own life. And then it's sort of hand it over and we go along. I guess it will be a mix of both this, but for sure, we are looking at some long-term contracts, which uh, would have a tenure of more than a year, two years, uh, a normal software practices. So that mix is going to come in from next financial year with the new customers coming in. Uh, that's it from my end. Thank you. Thank you, Rudrish. Thank you. The next question is from the line of uh, Mr. Venkat. Uh, Mr. Venkat, uh, I have unmuted you. Please go ahead. Hello? Mr. Venkat? I think there's no response from Mr. Venkat. So we will take the next question. Uh, uh, the next question is from the line of uh, Ishit Desai. Ishit, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, hi, sir. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, I wanted to understand uh, more about our partnership with the domestic VC ecosystem, right? Because uh, our investments in uh, this early stage startups, uh, as we move forward, are going to, we're going to work with more and more this uh, domestic and international VCs. So are we working on any partnerships or deeper relationships with them where we can run some joint programs to get access to some early stage opportunities or entrepreneurs? So just wanted to understand on that. Um, as a formal relationship, MOU stuff kind of thing, if you're talking of, absolutely no. We don't have any such partnership with any VC because not do we want to do it. Uh, in terms of uh, meeting and taking our startups to the VC universe in general, we have been doing it. And if you notice, most of our startups have been funded by pretty uh, significant VCs in that part. That said, every VC have their theme. And in many VCs, uh, sector allocation or the kind of company profile they want and all, uh, we don't necessarily fit in for many of our startups. So there it has been that we have not really had some purchase from certain kinds of VCs, but with the overall VCs, uh, family offices, which we are trying to explore, I think we have had uh, nice relationships and the fruition is visible in terms of the number of startups that have already been funded. Sure, sure. Uh, sir, uh, uh, also the recent funding on Signal Analytics. Uh, can you help us with the investor name who has invested in Signal Analytics? I am not sure how much we can divulge, but Srini, I, I leave it to you for that part. So you're on mute, Srini. So most of these investors are individual investors. Okay. And uh, who have been closely working with us uh, for last three years and who was uh, looking at um, Zelf mock and its growth wherever we have achieved, whatever we have achieved. Okay. So those are the investors who have invested and all are individual investors. Okay, so, so this is not a VC investment or an institutional investment? No, no, no. no. Not, I don't think uh, we are right now at this moment of time very keen on VC investment in Signal. Mm -hmm. Probably in the next, next to next round or so, then we will look at organized capital. Sure. So when I look at and when I look at the number, it's, it's not it's still marked up uh, at, at the book value. It's not marked up to the valuation at which you have raised money. Any specific reason for that? Uh, I could not get you. Yeah, the signal analytics valuation. It's mm -hmm. still at the book value in the presentation, right? Yeah. You raised in at a sixty crore valuation. Any specific reason of not marking it up? So basically for associate entities and uh, your subsidiaries, it has to be at the cost price, not at the market price as per the accounting standard. Okay. And uh, whatever investments in case, if you have in any of the associates or subsidiaries, you will see at cost, not at the market value. Even for FMV, right? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so uh, can, do I have space for some more questions or should I come back in the queue? 
Yeah, you, you can, can ask one, one question. Sure. I okay. think that's fine. Yeah. So uh, one, one, one thing I want to understand, sir, in, in terms of our portfolio, uh, if we were to break up uh, between companies which are at before MVP, uh, pre-revenue and re generating revenue. So what will the breakup uh, say roughly? I'm not looking for an exact number, but what will the broader contribution amongst that? I guess uh, now that we have some maturity, I would say 30% are pre-revenue and 70% uh, are post-revenue, but not necessarily that they are burning. Most of them are burning still. Mm -hmm. I think we will see, the as we had said, that this year would be a transition year. Mm -hmm. Some of our startups would move into uh, operating positivity. Understood. Noted. So I'll, I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. The next question we have is uh, from uh, Mr. Venkat. Mr. Venkat, uh, I have unmuted you. Please go ahead. <coughs> For the opportunity, uh... Uh, sir, uh, the question is, uh, we have we made like uh, 11 or 12 million dollar revenue for this particular quarter. Uh, so, you know, what would be the untangible revenue, say, for instance, you know, when our resources actually, when our team members rather work in other uh, companies, so there is a value associated uh, for their work, right, per hour or per day rates. So there should be some additional uh, income uh, that must have accrued. So what is that additional uh, value that you actually associate? We don't account it that way. Uh, so as you rightly said, there are certain parts of it which there is a margin built into it and we don't hold equity in those parts. And where we hold equity, we are doing it at a cost factor where margins are non-existent, right? So effectively, there we are sort of uh, monetizing it over time on the way the company is growing and the way the valuation of that company is growing. Uh, on a month-on-month -on -month basis, it's difficult to accumulate that and give a benchmark to it because the chance of success or failure depends on how that startup would do. That's why we do it in a lump sum. And the, the result of that intangible gain that you were saying is basically palpable in the portfolio value increase of our holdings. Uh, but all of the profit comes from the non-portfolio services, non-portfolio company services that we do basically. So in a way, the, the, the normal services are the ones which subsidize uh, the portfolio services. And to Venkat, to add what Sandeepan said, uh, basically we don't do that, okay, deploy five resources to one X company and charge them about 20% margin over and above their cost. We don't do that. Basically, whatever we do is we build an end-to-end -end solution, even if it is on a services base, and that to okay, unless and until there is some sort of an innovation which we can use it for our startups. Yeah. So how do we value uh, the uh, contribution of uh, uh, the team members, actually? Because, you know, we are just charging whatever. Uh, you mean to say that we are charging just, uh, 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 you know, cost to the employee? Is that what we are saying? To the startup ecosystem where we hold equity, yes, we are charging the cost of the employee, including the overheads, just as a zero-sum game. Whereas when we are doing services project, there there is a markup uh, or overall uh, margin that we make on the overall, not at a per employee basis, but on the overall effort that we have put in, there's a markup and uh, there's a profit margin to that part. So uh, what is the service component out of this one and what is the- uh, The customer uh, type, what you call everything is a service, the customer type determines. Broadly, yeah, there are projects right. where we yeah. don't have any equity. That's pure service. We are not doing it for any other reason but for profit. Okay. So if I take this number on an annualized basis, per employee revenue is coming to like $12,675. So which to me looks very low actually for a company so to which is doing such technology. So you have to add to that the portfolio Fine. increase value also, right? Divide that also by employee. Yeah, but, in case. yeah but, but adding that as well, it will not add so much because we are just adding 61 more crores, right? Which again, we are not monetizing now. 
we would monetize it whenever whenever yeah, 61 uh, whenever it goes to public or something like that or whenever somebody buys the equity from us yeah that is the whole whole point of this company but the 61 crores divided by 75 heads is quite a significant bump right on the 12000 dollars that you said so, so that uh, might add another 10000 dollars or 20000 dollars not much okay. actually you know for analytics see when i look at the competing uh, companies you know which are in similar field i don't want to name those companies no, but uh, they are they are worth between 65 to 75000 dollars per hour uh, sorry yep. per year yep so uh, when get frank so how do we fill this gap yeah we don't we are looking at the value creation completely and wherever we are doing profit i'm sure we are at par with them wherever we are taking the part of creating wealth there we are playing the long wait game that's a risk we are taking okay okay so when are we going to see substantial growth uh, from 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 a that's what i is the point of view the services part as a discipline action we are only fruitioning from first quarter of next financial year so april okay. onwards okay. there is a special practice which is only looking at services and the revenue mix which is probably swini can correct me let's say what 80 or uh, 70 30 today 70 points towards our portfolio company we hope that goes to a 50 50 or 40 60 kind of a break up in the short term okay sounds good thanks very much 60 40 60 coming from the portfolio companies and 40 coming from the services company and yeah. that's the revenue in terms of money effort wise probably in 2020 okay thanks for the clarity thanks no no it, it is it's a very important question and by the way when cut that is the differentiation of zelcom we are not trying to only build margins we are trying to build wealth and our hope is that if you see you are looking at an averaged out holding but if you look at the vintage based holding and you add, accumulate a 5 to 6 year rotational part where the real value unlocks then you will realize that the per capita income is significant even if you amortize it over multiple years Okay 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 sir thank you very much thank you so much thank you uh, the next question is from the line of mr ashok mr ashok i have unmuted you uh, please go ahead yeah hello sir pleasure to talk to talk to you hi ashok so during one of the earlier conversations you mentioned that uh, you are in discussion with uh, some company which deals with uh, metaverse right is that still on the cards we said we call it virtual if i remember myself i said metaverse yeah, is that's right good word but more of virtual part of it yes that's on the cards great any new company which we are talking to um, in terms of uh, portfolio investment which you can really at this point in time we are always talking to new companies we have told the sectors that we are talking in but as and when they mature and they are uh, sort of disclosable we disclose it immediately on the official channels onto that part as of now whatever was disclosable we have disclosed but remember that uh, for every company that makes it to the uh, notice in bac there are five six companies which have come through a funnel of 30 or other companies which we have not really matured or fusioned into it that's a patient process with high attrition but that's what keeps our stock as healthy as we possibly could do logically okay and uh, we have we had also set up the hyderabad operations right yes. have we started to uh, take in clients for that particular clients are from all over so i'll tell you what happens so, so personally i have relocated to hyderabad because when we had the senior people joining in they were hyderabad based and it made sense that we all work together for the first 2 3 years when the culture sets in Uh, so basically this is becoming the corporate office and we are running the business from here the bangalore office which is more towards a tech production and all that continues to do it but uh, any project actually there are very few projects which is not happening some part or the other from all the three offices together each of us have a specific role to play design planning resource allocation budgeting uh, innovation that happens from hyderabad and stuff like that the tech innovation and all which is traditional tech that happens out of bangalore data science some part of uh, the some functions of uh, 
thing that we do for transactional part of the technology that happens out of Kolkata. That's broadly how we do it. It is not like Hyderabad offices are separate SBU, or Kolkata offices are separate SBU. Uh, England obviously will have a separate billing head. That's a strategic business unit. But these are branch offices which are functional. And of course, they are also built so that we can tap onto the local talent. Uh, wherever we get good talent, they have three options to join. That's the main thing. Thanks. That clarifies. Thank you. Thank you. We have a follow-on question from uh, Mr. Ishit. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, sir, I wanted to understand in terms of our deal pipeline, right? So typically, uh, how many number of companies do we evaluate? And so what's the ratio when it comes to final screening and success? So I have made the confession before, but I'll recap it. But things are changing now. Uh, Till now, we didn't really have a marketing department. It was all incoming. And as requests came in, we used to service them. Now we have somewhat of a marketing channel. We have a, some sort of a target. Mm -hmm. And we are sort of reinvigorating ourselves to those new norms. Hopefully, that is settling in. Mm -hmm. And as planned, from April onwards, we'll have a more professional approach towards marketing, where the deal funnel and all would be more or less systematized. That said, please do remember that people know us as an innovative company, and there are going to be many incoming queries where people feel that, uh, okay, let's try with itself if this problem has a solution at all. And in many cases, uh, I'm not doing it. In many cases, we are often the last recourse where people have tried for some time, it has not worked out, and they're taking a chance with us, or they have an innovative new idea and think we are the only mad enough people to listen to it with patience and try to fruition it. But we are changing that. Some standard projects are also coming in now. Uh, we have told of our ambitions uh, and surely my focus to try to get some uh, government contracts or government-related contracts. I think now we will get into more of a systematic rhythm where more discipline will be seen on that part. So we hope that we will be able to uh, at least look at uh, eight to nine new clients per month of which we hope that in the first few things we will be able to convert one or two. Size of the project is different. That's a different ballgame altogether. And slowly, slowly we'll mature so that our funneling and all processes there. Yeah. So given the manpower we have planned, that's the minimal part that we want to track. Remember, these are not set projects. These are all conceptual projects, like Srini was saying. It's an end-to-end -end delivery part that we are only focused on. At no point of time are we trying to do skill supply or, or supply of manpower purely with no intent or solution in place. We'll, we'll skirt those uh, markets, and that gives us a slightly more need for more focus. Uh, that's the part that we are happy with. Uh, coming back to your question, we have had, this is something I can, I can disclose, we have had some success already in the UK and US markets. There are projects which are ongoing and uh, they have been onboarded in the recent past. And I think we more or less are sticking to our plan. We will see how it goes, but till now, nothing uh, worrisome beyond what we have planned. But of course, we are always greedy. We hope we can strive and push it more and, and grow at a faster pace. So thank you. I, I think my question was more around the startups and portfolio companies. That how will you typically evaluate before investing? Okay. Sorry, in sorry, sorry, sorry. No, no, it's, it's See, deal pipeline and all. Typically, we only yeah, 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 yeah. because uh, startups we take with a very different respect level. Now, in startups, I've explained before that we have set themes and set sectors that we do it. The commonality is they're all data science dependent and they're targeted to the next 500 millions. Okay. And, and more or less, we stick to the fortes of health, education, agriculture, and livelihood. Mm -hmm. If you look at our current portfolio, you will see that education has been the main focus in the last uh, seven, eight months, mostly. Whereas in medical, we almost have non-existent. So that should tell you the gaps we are going to over-focus and fulfill. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't have a number that we keep in mind. We keep our wires hot and are constantly meeting with entrepreneurs now. Mm -hmm. They're the, the kind of people we get to finally get excited to work with. That is like a three to five percent chances. We keep on meeting startups and all, but um, unlike a financial event, we actually have to see a lot of psychological parts that we can add value to them, we respect each other, we can work with each other. <coughs> so that is there. 
That said, even there we are trying to discipline. There are uh, very, very senior people who have joined, who have sort of, we have discussed the value of, and we are learning the value of discipline, having a target. I think we would see some numbers per quarter basis coming probably from the next quarter, we'll have a better plan. And when, as and when we have a plan, as and we'll have an action plan, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to tell it to you people and then do it. We're not going to hide it and then and then try to do it. So, I, I, Srini, if you have something to add, I, I don't know how much. Uh, yeah. yeah, and sir, in terms of number of investments made, uh, I'm only talking about startup portfolios now. Uh, how many, uh, how many write-offs or lower, how many valuations have been lowered down? We have a lower round, and how many uh, in of in, in terms of percentage of total investments made or numbers, whichever is. Yeah, broadly percentage was I can tell you it's between twenty five and thirty three. That's my thing. The num exact numbers we need can probably tell. You're on mute, Siri. You're on mute. Yeah, basically what we do is we do look at every quarter on a quarter basis, the performance of the portfolio companies. In case if they are not going anywhere or if they're in the right direction, we do write off. That's the reason why in case if you look at our, look at our balance sheet, maybe okay. every year you will see one or two uh, uh, portfolio companies which are written off. Or in case if they are not going anywhere at times, if there is an opportunity, we also do an exit. Understood. Understood. Sure. Uh, and, and sir, uh, and, uh, have you looked at uh, trying to expanding bandwidth to come to sectors like say direct to consumer, which again has a very strong data science role to play wherein data and customer feedbacks are of great importance, which are of retail industries. Have you looked at uh, going beyond some of these industries and looking at exp All the time. Uh, as I said, that we don't look at sectors per se. As long as the basic tenants are made that we are serving the next 500 million primarily, and it's affecting one of those health, education, agriculture, livelihood sectors, or in, uh, in, in general purpose technology is something which is multilingual or video audio based. Mm -hmm. uh, we are always looking out. So we look for the entrepreneur more than the sector focus, to be very frank. And yes, they happen to be in these sectors and all. For example, uh, D2C is a marketing buzzword. Yeah. What he explained about Woovly and all, it's an enabler of D2C. So we already have something on that space. Uh, would we look very eagerly at someone who's trying to do an e D2C venture in, let's say, a kind of a, a, a input supply to farmers? Absolutely. We'd be excited to work with such a partner. But the entrepreneur has to make sense to us. Sure. And, and last question from my side, sir. Um, in, in in your existing portfolios, right? Some someone who is at very recent stage but getting very good traction or something you are very excited about, uh, given the initial response. Are there any any portfolio companies currently beyond the ones which you have mentioned, of course, well, which are which you've already mentioned? Not a portfolio company, but the structure that we have formed for Signal and the response we have got, the kind of entrepreneurs we are getting to interact some of the things that we are already uh, more or less looking at closing. I think it has been a pretty good uh, experience, much better than we thought. Sure, sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Please good. remember, Signal is at least a cluster of four startups under it. So it's yeah, exciting. Uh, for a broad sense from what you tried to explain last time, I think this is, this is the best way we can understand right now, right? As in when we... We get to know. We more. also don't know everything. We have figured it out. Yeah. But we know that we are going to tackle a sector instead of tackling one startup at a time and having a problem yep. in making them cross pollinate. So we are trying to root out the problem at the base, and we are learning on the way. But till now, so far, so good, better than expected. Understood. Understood. Perfect, sir. Thank you so much, and uh, good from my side. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, uh, Ishit. The next question we have is from uh, Dwanil Desai. Uh, Dwanil, please go ahead. Uh, hi, uh, Sandeepan. Uh, uh, good afternoon. Uh, are you able to hear me? Yes, Ranil. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, again, pretty basic question, but, uh, uh, you know, so basically wanted to understand uh, how do we decide about exit from our, uh, you know, existing investment? Is there certain scale, certain valuation? I mean, what are the kind of things that you look out for uh, for, uh, you know, scaled up investments, uh, you know, in, in, like, you know, money that we have put in has multiplied. Uh, what are the parameters on which you will decide that, you know, uh, 
uh, we will make an exit. And a follow up on that or a related question on that is that let's say, you know, there are investment which, of, you know, we are in fourth or fifth year and, you know, you know, they've scaled up and we make an exit and we come out with a significant amount of cash. What do we do with that? I mean, is there any thought process around what do, what can we do? What should we do uh, with the money that you get from exit? Right. So first, I'll, I'll take your first question first. Uh, <clears throat> I've always said that we don't believe that less than seven years uh, of any startup we would look at it. That said, this is the year some of them will turn that magic number and, and we will look at it. But we essentially would always do it on a case-to-case -case basis. We are not matured enough to have a set principle or a set numeric, numeric approach to it. We have started thinking on those issues now because the maturity and the vintage of our startups are reaching that seven-year age. But there are always exceptions. We have taken exit. We have written off some of these things. That's on a case-to-case -case basis based on what we believe is are we adding more value? Is there something that we think that we would do it? Should we block this sector because, or, or should we give it a cooling period for some time so that we can re-enter it and we have probably achieved whatever we could in this space that will be there. Coming to your second question, um, my first reaction is that we are in the path of growth right now. Any money coming in, I would rather want to deploy it for other growth opportunities than anything else, at least for the next three, four years. That's it, that's my personal preference. We are a well-governed body with the board coming in. And at any point of time, the board situation is final. I have no prior inkling to it, nor do I want to have it. And I do believe the board is also not a very set board. They are not people who are wishing to do it by the rules and they don't throw rule books. They look at the entire structure. They look at the environment and make judicious and very mature decisions, which I think will take the company forward. But my innate reflexive intention is to go for growth at least for the next three, four years more. Yeah, uh, just uh, so I think probably I will rephrase my question uh, on the second part. So mm -hmm. I felt, you know, fairly well understand that we are on a growth path uh, and we would redeploy that capital for growth. So I think that it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. The question is that whether, uh, you know, we have enough opportunities available Let's say you get an exit of 20, 25, 30 CR, and our typical ticket, size, ticket sizes are less than one CR, right? So, so one way to go is that you don't dilute yourself in the startups which are scaling up well, mm -hmm. uh, or you make larger ticket size investments. So I was thinking that- Okay, or we don't take investments, right? That's also the third option. So if you look at, let's take the comparison of the latest instance that you have. Uh, yeah. Srini, how much did, uh, uh, is the signal raised right now? 5.24. Sorry, 5.24. So that means we could think of uh, five signal-like structures. We have the idea capacity for that. We may not go for the first round of funding for those five clusters if we get 25 crores. Okay. Got it. Got it. There's always that. See, idea is a more premium factor for us. I don't think money has been a constraint for us touch wood from when we have got a good idea, when we believe in something, raising money has not been there. Yes, we have always liquidated ourselves more than that. I surely would focus on seed and pre-seed stage funding and deploy money as much as possible in that stage, then try to do a secondary follow-up on existing investments intuitively. That said, there are some of these building blocks, which are our startups, which have strategic importance for us for our future plans. We may lend in our <laughs> equity there if the situation arises, and if we have ample money to make significant debt. Okay. It's all situational. I really don't have a strategy. I'm telling you, if then else conditions which all the possibilities exist. Understood. Understood. Uh, the only reasonable assumption to make is that we will have enough ideas to redeploy that capital, right? We will. That we are sure. Yeah, that we so, are sure. so that is the question. Uh, to be very uh, frank, we have cut our quote according to a cloth and we've always been frugal. But if you give us a lot of cloth, we can make a lot more. Oh, okay, got it. Uh, and second, just, uh, I, I don't know how much feasible it is, but some of the startups where the scale up is happening, uh, is it possible to share some operational metrics so that we get sense? Uh, I think we do share, and Srini did summarize some of the key ones in the beginning. We do share what 
whatever is in the public domain and whatever even now, in the reports investor reports and all key metrics of key startups are given yeah okay sure i'll go through that then thank you yeah <clears throat> uh, in case anyone else wishes to ask a question uh, you may please raise your hand and we will allow we we'll wait for a moment Sure. Yes, yeah, sure. Do you wish to ask a question? So, do you wish to ask any question? second yeah we have a question from uh, amutan ayer amutan please go ahead hello uh, good evening and thank you for this opportunity hi amutan uh, with respect to our own products the uh, erp solution the docuex uh, and certain services that we would be offering yeah uh, how dependent are we on <coughs> travel restrictions uh, like opening up completely so uh, the extended question is if uh, we b- become a kind of a free world in terms of travel would that kind of scale up very fast no i don't think that's a dependency at this stage for our product suite uh, but it's a good question some of the interests and some of the pipelines and some of the existing customers who open overseas we are taken as a service project but we are using some of those product components as of now the real constraint is that when we go with the product market full fledged we want to deploy a sizable dedicated resource at this point of time we decided that it's better spent to have the management bandwidth and those resources focus on the servicing sector improvement and our portfolio companies for the moment as i said we next year third quarter onwards we'll relook at the product series in between if a, a a good luck event happens and we get the chance we'll exploit it but as a focused uh, uh, intervention and 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 our resource deployment we don't see it happening before next year third quarter uh, and the hyderabad office uh, is it getting any extra uh, like uh, manpower are we recruiting for the design development uh we are recruiting business. people and we are saying that you need to work with us in person uh, but you are you are free to choose any of the three locations kolkata hyderabad or bangalore certain functions like product design thinking and all where uh, the key management people including myself srivas were involved those positions are only for hyderabad thank you so much thank you thank you mr ayer Thank you. So I think there is a related question of Satyam coming up in the chat. Uh, I'll read out the question first. I'm Satyam Gupta. I'm shareholder of Zell. Uh, we have three products. You plan to launch new products? We have not even launched those three products. We have just built it, and we plan to launch yes, those three products. And there is there are space in our minds for two, three more products. One of them itself could be more of a venture by itself, which is hundred percent owned by Zell. uh there is one more from hit chandani i'm not able to read the full name it's not coming do we have a long term vision whether revenues from our services business is used to invest in startups absolutely if we make enough revenues enough profits from that then yes we would do that part sir attrition rate for q3 uh not very high but we have had some attrition and some of the attrition is kind of discipline led we have seen that some people are reluctant to come to a work from office in your back and we are extremely stringent for our culture that that is an absolute non compromisable thing for us in fact the overall count has gone up from q2 to q3 q2 yeah but attrition can happen and we could augment with more i'm just being we have had some attrition yeah. but more on the fact that we believe in work together than work from home and, and that's something that we are not letting any other precedents or any uh, bad precedents or any special favor being done to it 
Yeah. Uh, okay. There are some basic questions that so the products are not launched yet. We are only providing services as of now. Uh, okay. Yes and no. The products are more like component inventorized now. There are components. When we provide a services business, we often use that uh, component readily and we prior intimate the customer and we showcase that, hey, we have these components ready. We'll extend these things to do it, but you still have to pay for the overall bill of it. Uh, Manish Agarwal asks, do we have geography-wise service revenue breakup? Srini? Yeah, so basically in case if you are looking at India versus overseas, close to about 60% revenue comes from India and 40% comes from overseas for the previous quarter. Yeah. And sir, when will be profitable as sustainable basis? Profitable and uh, <laughs> where unit economy is profitable, but if you meaning believe that when are we going to have green numbers only in our part, uh, I think probably sometime next financial year, uh, third quarter onwards, we can hope to have that. So, uh, Mr. Pawan, in case even if you look at it, like we do have a lot of senior senior hires. If you look at a uh, breakup between the salary versus ESOP, we believe people who can be with us for a longer duration, who believe in creating well, that's why we give an ESOP. So, if you look at even Q2 or Q3 or Q4, as we mentioned in the Q1 of this fiscal year, you will see ESOP expenses on higher side for even next fiscal year as well. But yes, as Mr. Sandeepan said, that you can see uh, profitable even including ESOP in next fiscal year, maybe in Q3 or Q4. Yeah. So uh, do we have recurring license fee on the product components? No, as of now, no. We keep it as is. We don't give them upgrades naturally unless... It's a good customer we want to be in the good books of. We don't have a strategy for uh, lifetime monetization of it. As of now, we are almost doing it like an OEM. Any crown jewel in the investment companies, if you can highlight that? Uh, well, we are lucky. We have a multi-pronged throw uh, kind of a crown. So there are several. I think Sydney has mentioned some of them. Uh, personally, obviously, we always have highlighted some of the parts from impact point of view. I think uh, the ones that we told, Woovly, Signal, uh, Mihoop, of course, um, Fortigo, Move, then uh, Slate, they're all pretty good on that. TSIM has a very high impact part. So how we define jewels is completely, till now we, we are pretty happy with our quarter and it's all literally except correct. So honestly on that part. Any application managed service contract? Not as of now, not as of now. Typically for now, what we, we are looking at those uh, things in the services expansion. For now, we typically think that any organization has an innovation phase and then the business as usual phase. We have been skirting the business as usual phase. We do a handover post the innovation phase and we have been doing it. Some part of the business as usual case also we may do. And that's why I said the very nature of how our engagement is, we surely will have some contracts which are more tenure based with two, three years, not project delivery event based. So that maturity is something that we are going through ourselves. Right off is on the cost only, yes. The other parts we've already booked in the losses, right? So that's already factored in anyway. Sure. Uh, thank you. Uh, the next question that we have is from the line of Nitin. Uh, Nitin, please go ahead. Nitin, uh, you can please unmute yourself. Hello. Hi, Nitin. Hi, sir. Hi. So, uh, my question would be, sir, uh, as uh, you know, with Signal, you clearly uh, demonstrated that, you know, uh, the company can definitely do high, definitely do hyperscaling. You know, out of nowhere, you've uh, built a company that is a 60 crore valuation company. So basically, uh, being a long-term investor, uh, I know you know the management is definitely uh, the best. Uh, you uh, uh, you know, and the new uh, guys that you recruited, uh, you know, Mr. Kura and Madhu sir. So basically, in the long term. 
how big you know your company can be you know i've got a huge expectation but just want to have some sort of idea because i know you're definitely a hyperscaler you've proved it time and again so okay so first thing some facts need to be corrected mr kura and i are working for 16 years together and he was there from day minus 180 mr srinivas kolipara is a new entrant so mr yeah, yeah. kolipara and mr madhu kumalil they are the new parts and as you said we are ideologically bound and that has been that's the first part now coming to hyperscaling uh, i i think i have covered it sometime better the unified metric that we use, use inside self more internally is that how many people are we affecting every day which means that something we have developed how many people are using it every day and i would dearly love to go to a stage where you know we will not stop rather till we have 5 to 7 million daily users of something we have developed. on a base of 50 60 million who are using it or maybe more but that is the metric we want to hear on to that part sorry 50 to 60 million i get confused with crores and lakhs and million sorry 50 to 60 million daily users yes yeah i think that's the answer your question you are on mute Yes, Nitin. Yeah, yeah. So I was just asking. So, do we have any long-term vision of how much uh, would be in terms of uh, valuation as a whole company? Let's say five years. I don't bother about that's a game theory thing. <laughs> But what okay. I do bother about is profitability and revenue. Okay. okay. Looking at fifty, sixty million people using it every day, and let's hypothetically say that per transaction I make two rupees or five rupees because it's a mass market. You can do okay. the math. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, we have a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, uh, Mr. Om Prakash Shah is asking, uh, how many quarters uh, ESOPs is uh, pending? Hopefully, ESOPs will be pending. Answer. The current scheme is pending for another seven, eight, uh, six, seven quarters, I think. But ESOPs will have new schemes coming. That's the best way to get talent who will be there with us for the long term. uh we have any people people have been given in esops at different stages for few people even if there for four years as well so this esops which started this year or last year you will see for next another uh, four years yeah thank you uh we have we another... have any projects pipeline in design services not yet not yet not only in design uh, but we do see good scope there uh, we have not even we have we have we have started forming it but once we form uh, after the formation a few months will go till we build the capability and then we can expect so a pure design project which we hope we will get it, it may be that the design project is the first part of it in and then we also do the fulfillment of it i think we can expect a pure design project to come maybe 6 7 months down the line at the earliest thank you uh we have next question from ishit deshai ishit please go ahead uh, sir one more question uh, have we come yes, across please. any of the exit opportunities from some of the successful companies that any incoming investor looking to buy out our stake but we have not exercised not thinking that the company has a maybe better potential i mean no one has made a hard force on us they have suggested and we have politely declined yeah uh, so but but we have come across opportunities that we we can at our discretion could have chose to exit right well at our discretion not at our whim yeah. at the point of funding we were given a choice we didn't exercise it yes and that doesn't and, mean that the offer still exists right no i'm sure i'm sure sir but uh, and how many of them maybe 3 4 i really would not <laughs> tentatively i'm not looking about looking at the number but tentatively maybe maybe 3 4 yeah. you're right yeah okay okay and sir sir thank you thank you thank you uh, we have the next question from rudresh kalyani rudresh please go ahead yep rudresh uh, hi uh, sini told that uh, we diluted 9% to individual investor so can i get to know the demography of these investors uh, see you can give sample profiles i can give sample profiles on the demography uh, no, usually uh, in the initial stage we don't dilute uh, 
uh, dilute easily to the individual investors like us. It will be either to the elite investors like uh, Kunal Shah or Vijay Shekhar Sharma or something like that. Uh, are they those investors or is it uh, retail investors? I mean, with all due respect to everyone there, uh, they're not retail investors to come to your point. They are people who have been part of Zelb's journey since Zelb started, first believers in us, some of them, uh, people we respect, and more importantly, people whose money we wanted, because what we felt was they bring lots more value than just the money in this round. Mm -hmm. And one more question is on the preemptive rights. So do we, all the times, do we exercise those rights or uh, do we defer it and uh, exercise Sorry, and we are IPO. We, we have not had a single company going to IPO. No, preemptive rights. Yeah, just to answer uh, Rajesh, yours, for example, we did a couple of investments wherever we want to increase. For example, if you look at Slate, Slate, when other, other, other investors were investing, we also thought that we should also ensure that we don't get diluted. Yeah. So we have invested. We have done bridge round for Mihup also. But they are rare and far and forward. Usually, we usually like to deploy our cash for that. Maybe situations will change in two, three years. Usually, who will lead these rounds? Is it Zelp or? No, the existing uh, investors typically yeah, do. Yeah, the investor other do. investors deal it. We, 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 other we, investors do, usually. Okay. Sometimes entrepreneurs, they also lead it. Okay. Okay. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, uh, we have uh, three minutes left. In case anyone else uh, wishes to ask a question, you may please uh, go ahead and, and raise your hand. We will allow. Uh, I mean, I'm okay to a little bit more than three minutes if there are questions, but yeah, give it to you, are we? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we have a question in uh, from Mr. Ravindra Yelappa. Uh, did the funding round complete in Mehup and Wubli? We can't comment on it. Moment it is uh, disclosable, it will come out as an official announcement anyway. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Puneet Motihar, uh, do you wish to ask a question? That's a known name. Anyone else uh, who wishes to ask a question uh, may please raise your hand. Yes, Samutan. I have... Yeah. So uh, we normally uh, revalue the the book value of the investi companies every two quarters. I think September and March. Uh, broadly, what uh, other than like if they have not raised any funding in between. Uh, what parameters do we use uh, at Zelpmog to, to do that? So, uh, sir, basically, one is we look at the last round of funding and in last three, three months or in last six months, how is the performance? Are they on right traction when they spoke to them initially? Whether is there growth in their uh, business model or not? Based on that, we will look at it. So Muthan, the, the basic criteria is we look at consistency and adherence to the plan. So anything which is going on to the plan, if it's on the negative side, then we discount. If it's on the positive side, we stay status quo. Conservative. But thank you. Thank you. In case anyone else wishes to ask a question, uh, you may please raise your hand. We'll wait for a moment uh, uh, for any, anyone else to ask a question. I think we are done. Yes, sir. Uh, since there are no more, no further questions, I would like to hand it over to the management for their closing comments.
Sweeney, now this time you please give it. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. In case still, if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to write back to us. We will re respond to you as early as possible. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Nice chatting up. And as soon as said, any questions, you feel free to drop by. And uh, next two, three months, keep watching the announcements that should keep on happening. Thank you, Sandeepan, sir. Thank you, Srinivas, sir. With that, this call ends. Have a nice day. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye. Recording stopped.